Hi folks, welcome to Testing Hacks. Today we will see what is SDLC. SDLC stands for Software Development Life Cycle. As the abbreviation suggests, this is the life cycle of a software, wherein it will uh, the software will get into different phases till the completion of the project. So, as per the uh, definition, SDLC is a process followed for a software project within an organization. It is sequence of activities carried out by developers to design and develop high quality software. It consists of detailed plan how to develop, maintain, replace and alter or enhance specific software. So as we saw that the description says that in this uh, uh, stages the developers will be involved and as well as testers will be involved and also we have the BAs involved where they play a main role in collecting the requirement requirement gathering is the main part of any of the software development within that process we will start after collecting the requirement we will be continuing with the other stages so we will see what and all the different stages which are present in the software development life cycle starting from requirement analysis or requirement gathering to the development as well as to the maintenance as you can see here these are the different phases of a software development life cycle the very first thing is requirement gathering so gather business and technical requirements so in this phase we will be gathering all the requirements we will see each of them what is what and design development testing deployment and then maintenance so these are the stages of an software development life cycle so when it comes to requirement gathering, this is the most important and fundamental stage in SDLC. So as I have already told you, BA is the person who will be collecting all the requirement from the customer. Okay. So and then the, it is performed by business analyst with the inputs from the customer, the sales department, market uh, surveys and domain experts in the industry. Suppose if they want to develop something, so we, we need to have the requirement from many of the people. It is not only one person who will be using the software. It will be many persons who will be using the software when it comes to the large scale industries. So in that case, we might have to collect the requirement from different several people. Okay, so this information is then used to plan the project approach to conduct the product feasibility study in financial, operational and technical areas. So within this requirement gathering phase, so there is another phase where it comes within this uh, requirement phase, which is called feasibility study. So or else it can be considered as another phase too. But here, what I am telling here is, so feasibility study is nothing but the people who are involved in this will also talk about the how feasible it is and which language can be chosen to do all the software requirements and what and all the requirements needs to be done to develop this application. So it undergoes a lot of things. Okay, not only but here uh, we are just checking the feasible how feasible it is to develop this software considering from software i mean the uh, considering from hardware to what and all the things are required to develop that software okay planning for quality assurance requirement and identification of risk associated with project is done in the planning stage so as i have already told you so within this feasibility study we will also consider the financial and yeah, as I have already told you, uh, mentioned about the uh, operational and technical areas wherein how feasible it is through hardware and what and all the required things are um, needed and how feasible it is. We will be checking that in the feasibility study. Also, as a quality assurance requirement, identifying the associated, the, what and all the risks associated with that project is also will be taken care and will also be noted so at the later stages they can have it resolved so if we if while collecting the requirements itself if we know there is some risk so we will be precaution we will be taking some precaution or else we will try to solve that issue right so that is what will be done here 
the outcome of technical feasibility study is to define various technical approaches that can be followed to implement the project and document uh, created during this phase is known as SRS or FRS. So uh, all these things will be documented and this document will be known as SRS which stands for software requirement specification or else we can call it as FRS which stands for functional requirement specification. Okay. So yeah, we will see the next stage which is design phase. In this designing phase, the SRS, the collected SRS is the reference for this designing phase. What happens? Using that SRS as a reference, the architect will design the software uh, in the sense how the UI should look like and what and all the architectural things is required, right? That will be done in this phase. And based on the requirements specified in the SRS, the product architecture is proposed and documented in this DDS, which stands for Design Document Specification. Okay. A design approach clearly defines all the architectural modules of a product along with the its communication and data flow representation with external and third parties so before having the code ready we have to have the structure right how the ui should look like and also what and all the modules needs to be covered suppose say if, if uh, that is a financial or banking domain so what and all the things you can perform in the banking so you can have payment section where you can pay uh, you know your bill and you can have a, a transaction or transfers to where you can transfer the money from your account to another person's account and what in all the external third parties modules required will also be documented in this designing phase okay and after this phase we have development phase so now all the design is ready and the developer is ready to code and now we have already decided which coding language should be used okay so using the tool the developer starts the development so actual development starts in this phase and product is built in this phase okay software development turns into projects requirement and prototypes into working code so what we meant here is software uh, so we have already a design ready right and also the requirement is ready okay so what we will do in designing phase we have prepared a prototype which is not a working software but it is a prototype how the look and feel is there right so that will be converted into working stage okay so this is known as pro prototype okay which is not working which was a, just a ui and we are converting it to the working code you in this development phase it's earliest phase in which you start to see something resembles to the final product okay by the end of this stage you will have a working feature to share with the customers okay so this is what happens in the development phase and next is the testing phase which we actually require so here testers are required okay those are the people who will be involved in each and every stage starting from uh, requirement analysis we have to analyze the requirement we have to understand the requirement okay so the our actual task starts when we get the uh, working software working software ready so once we get that we and we have also analyzed the requirement so what we will start we will start to test the application and we will see if it is meeting the requirement and the user needs okay developers can't code everything eventuality the fresh perspective that testing brings can help. So in this phase, what happens? We as a tester will ask the questions. We will think in the end user's perspective and there might be some questions which can be arisen in this stage. So where it might, uh, you know, get the requirement changed to in some of the projects that might happen. It depends. So testing team will perform testing based on the testing techniques to find out the deviation out of any expected outcome. So as a tester, this is our responsibilities and we will log a defect and there is a separate uh, um, 
defect life cycle for that and we will be seeing it in a later session and the next stage is so we have already collected the requirement we have already designed the ui and also we have a working software ready which is already tested so what is the next phase it is a development or the implementation so and one more thing what i can mention here is in the uh, in the testing phase the uh, testing will be done in uh, environments wherein some allocated servers will be there only for testing purpose so in that environment we will be performing our testing so say um, i have a sit phase sit1 sit2 sit3 there can be several environment set up only for testing okay and in the deployment what happens this will be deploy to the real time systems real time server okay so here now we have working software ready and we have deployed it to the web server okay so when we will be doing this we will be having a software ready and also it is tested and it is completely working fine in this stage we will be deploying it to the production and in some cases what happens suppose it is a new software and the customers are not ready hmm, to deploy it whole geographically okay in that case they can deploy it in some specific area and they can have a testing done there which is called as beta testing okay so in this beta testing they will find out if it is working fine and if they have found any deviation in the expected result and that kind of things will be done after this beta version testing too and the final stage is maintenance so finally we have the code deployed to the web server which is in the production and final stage is maintenance what is maintenance so the code whatever we have already uh, deployed to the production and there can be a chances that the uh, defects can come from the production too so sometimes what happens the defect might leak okay defect might leak and it might go to the production in that in that phase what happens so they will report the customers that they are facing this issues so in that case the customer will definitely come back to the ba or the developers and to have that fixed so once it is fixed again that will be tested by the testers and then after it is fixed then it will be deployed to the server so th these are the phases that will be involved in a software development life cycle okay and today i have some interview question as a bonus tip so my question is how frequently the software needs to be updated which means that how frequently we have to update the existing software so the answer is a week to 15 days This is the interview question as a bonus tip. Thank you for watching. Please do like my video, share it, do comment what your opinion is and also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.